Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely and talented and beautiful wife, Miss Southern Shell. I'm just laying it all out there today, mm-hmm. Shell. It's Friday, made it through another week, and we're getting ready to practice for our upcoming world foods contest that's pretty much what we got on tap this weekend yep did a another uh recipe this week that i thought was fantastic i well, mean well i wanted to talk about last weekend at the casinos we said we'd give an update heck yeah we was hot <laughs> i'm talking about on saturday so let's just break down our casino weekend okay we got out of here on friday you uploaded the podcast yeah got the audio version live on all the channels got the dog taken care of got the kid taken care of and then we packed our bags and we drove to tunica to gold strike casino and um which is only what half hour from it ain't even that far from our house yeah but we had hotel reservations and we were going to spend a day saturday watching football and maybe placing a few bets and hanging out with some of our friends, and it was fantastic. It was pretty fun. I, I needed that weekend of, mm-hmm. of not thinking about anything other than sports and you. Um, I threw that in there. Uh, <laughs> You're working it hard today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for another weekend, a casino weekend, next year. We do this once time a year. Mm-hmm. Usually once a year in football season. Hey, if, if we stay as hot as we was last weekend – we might have to go back on the rig. <laughs> well, we be- we play some bets Friday night, and we watched the uh, Braves game. Yeah, which was that was fun. Braves let me down, man. They're out. I know. They got but Friday the night I won that bet. St- yeah, I did. I won on them Friday night too. So we placed. I placed two bets. I went what one for one uh one for two I guess on Friday night. I had Central Florida. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought they were going to do a lot better than they did. I think I just placed. Braves yeah. bet on Friday night. And so we was up a little bit. Now, I, we're only betting like 20 25 bucks. Yeah. yeah. It, ain't like, it ain't like we're throwing a big money around. But then the next day, what we got up. Well, Friday night we went to the – did I take you to the steakhouse or did you take me to I the took steakhouse? You. Fred, I the, Fred took <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so we went and had a nice dinner. and yeah. just It was little, okay. It was, I thought it was pretty good. Mine was. Mm. My lobster bisque was awesome. The lobster bisque, I, you know, good. that's something I want to try to make. Is a lobster bisque. I'm gonna get some lobster flown in or something. Where can you get some good? You can't get it around here to make it. I hey, we think. got oysters fixing to show up in a couple hours. <laughs> they, we can get lobsters. Yeah, we can get lobster. <laughs> but I want to make a lobster bisque. That's that's probably my favorite soup. That or she crab soup mm-hmm. are two of my favorites this and time gumbo. of year. And it's cooling down. Well, you I don't, like a good gum, hot gumbo's seafood. not a soup. Yeah, it's a stew. Okay. You like um, a good se- hot seafood dish? Just lobster and she crab and soup. Yeah, I don't. I've never had it any other way. I don't know chowder. I can do a chowder. I like clam, clam chowder. chowder. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, maybe I do like hot seafood soup. <laughs> never thought of it that way. So we went. We went and did that. We didn't get steak. I mean, we can get steak. We get steak all the time. We yeah. both got fish. Uh, what, which one did you get? I think I got redfish. It was yeah. It was with it was a like, train sauce, and it was good. It's kind of like a crab sauce that I yeah. did. Yeah, it was a lot like that dish you did. And I got the uh, sea bass. I kind of have a rule. If I see sea bass on a menu, I'm going to order it because it's usually really, really good. And the fish was really good, but they had like a – it was almost like a sweet sauce on it, and I wasn't a big fan of that. Everything else was great about my dish except for that sweet sauce. I had three fried oysters on top that they weren't that good. But that, everything else about mine. There was some July. Good. There was some August oysters. Yeah. If you're really wanting some leftovers, yes. <laughs> I didn't try those, but I did. Uh, we did split uh, the cheesecake at, for dessert. We, I mean, we just had a we went for it. Meal. We did <laughs> appetizers, the whole thing. You know, you know, why not? Why not? When when at the gold strike, you know, you got to live it up. Yeah. And then we went to we bed. Didn't. We went to bed pretty early. Watched the rest of the football. You went to sleep. I watched the rest of that. Central Florida lose my 20 bucks. And then the next morning we got up and that's when it got serious. <laughs> Real serious. We got, we, we ended up getting our sheets the night before. So we kind of planned, we planned out our times. We had our, you know, yeah. our 11 o'clock games. And that's what we did when we games. watched the Braves game. Yeah. 2.30 games and then our night games. And we had it staged all day. And I placed, I think, 16 bets Saturday. 
you know, all different different mm-hmm. kinds, all about twenty, twenty five bucks. And I went thirteen for sixteen. And you went like how many did you place? Thirteen we figured up? I or think so. and you did eleven for thirteen. So yeah. you had a little bit better than me. And so we thought, you know, we got this figured out. She was telling me, This betting stuff's easy. They tell you who to bet on. You just decide if you want it or not and you just figure it out and and they it pay you. Easy. And you get to sit there and watch it all on TV and, and drink beer and eat, you know, delicious food and they bring it right to you. It was great. It was more fun on Friday night because it wasn't as crowded. Yeah. You know, Saturday, it was it got pretty crowded in there. Which, it did. Man, there's yeah. waiting. There was there was a wait all day to get tables, but we got there so early that morning we had <laughs> we had us a spot hemmed up all day. I mean, I don't know what they thought. It was we, fun, we stayed though. in there from probably Nine o'clock night was it nine thirty? Nine thirty AM. Game day was on. I mean, we yeah, watched that's game true. day and we didn't leave the sports book till ten. Yeah, I was done. Yeah. I was time. I was done. And we did gamble some in the casino. So we got down first. We placed our bets and went to dinner and then we decided we were gonna play some card uh card games. And what was it we were playing? Three card poker or yeah. something like that. And we, I mean, I never really played through. There's nothing to it, really. But man, they took what, 250 bucks from us <laughs> quick, both of us. We sat down. And it's like, man, we're already no, down. No, you left with money. I did, I, did I break even? I don't, I don't think, I think so. You left with I got it all back. Chips. So I know at the end of the day, when we come out of there on Sunday, like we were ahead on Saturday, I counted up. I was like, man, I'm up like 200 bucks. This is great. You know, I had a good day. You know, we bought drinks and had, you know, had some good. Uh, food and we had a fun time and I'm up 200 bucks. I'm gonna place a few bets on Sunday. I lost every single bet <laughs> I placed too. when I we just went over to the little kiosk and bet before we got our car out of valet. <laughs> I think I placed like five bets, lost them all. What I did is any money that I had left over, like that I was in the good for, that's what I used for my yeah. Sunday bets. But I kept all the rest of my money. Well, that's what I did. So I come out dead even. Yeah, I was me too. And, I, and I had a great time the whole weekend. I mean, the only thing I think we had to pay for was probably the hotel room. Yeah. That was the only thing we were down. And man, that was it was a fun weekend. I got one bet. I'm still riding. It was, was the that? Cowboys in the loss. Super Bowl. That's a loss if I've ever seen. <laughs> you made a prop bet. What was that? I hope it wasn't more than like it was 10, 10 bucks. bucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm Cowboys holding on to it until they're out. What does it pay you? Does it say on the ticket? It's only like 120. You would think oh. it'd be more. Yeah, it should have been. <laughs> I could have put some thousand to one odds on that. See, I thought about this when I was. Coming up with notes, I went with my head on Saturday. I looked at it very strategically. On Sunday, it was all heart. Yeah, <laughs> it was like you. the Braves to win. Who was your biggest? <laughs> what, what was your biggest game you took on Saturday? You felt like, man, that was a smart pick. Um, I picked Florida over well, Auburn. Oh, well, that was almost and I, to pick them though. But yeah, yeah, but Auburn was favored, and I put you know the most money on that game. Oh, did, is that yeah really? Which when I say the most money, I think it was like thirty five, forty bucks or oh, something. Yeah. You know. You felt good about that one, huh? Yeah, and I took Texas Tech, and that was a lock. Yeah, they come on. They was underdog, weren't they? Mm-hmm. That was a good one. Yeah. I'm telling you, it was easy. <laughs> it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go back tomorrow? Not really. <laughs> so that's where they get you. They, they, they wrote you in. They let you win a little. Now they know they got you, and they think you could come back and just – Next thing you know, you'll be a degenerate gambler down there watching those numbers fly across the thing. See, I, I'm – Betting on second quarter. <laughs> there is a chance I'm going to be Teasers. a degenerate in a lot of things, but gambling is one of those things that I'm kind of like, eh, yeah. I could take or leave. I'm pretty much a degenerate eater. Does that, <laughs> yeah. does that count? I'm a degenerate in a lot of things, but gambling. <laughs> is not one of yeah. them? Yeah. Uh, well, that was, that was, so that was our weekend, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, and then we came right back and filmed a Monterey chicken recipe. Yeah, Monterey chicken. I mean, I know everybody's seen Monterey chicken. Yeah, how'd you um, come up with the idea? <laughs> you didn't. I, did, I didn't. That, that's not my recipe. It's my take on it. Yeah. I don't know who. I mean, who originally created Monterey cheesy bacon barbecue chicken? Mm-hmm. I, mean, um, I think like Outback has a style of it. Oh, yeah. Chili's has a style. It's on menus all the time. There's a I lot of different ways. I saw somebody said Houston's has one called Chicken and Friends. <laughs> I like that. Chicken and Friends. The bacon and the, and the cheese is their yeah, friend. I guess. I like that. But yeah, that's so that's pretty much what it was. Uh, chicken breast with seasoning however you want. Boneless, I, skinless. Yeah, boneless, skinless. I used uh, the Grande Gringo, mm-hmm. and it was really, really good on yeah. the chicken like that. It kind of had that Mexican flair. It tastes like a good, uh, really good fajita chicken. Yeah. And then at the end of it, you glaze it before it's done with the barbecue sauce, 
And instead of getting my grill all saucy, I just put it in a little cast iron flat skillet and then let that sauce kind of pull up and glaze and, and then topped it with bacon and topped it with two different kinds of cheese, a Monterey Jack cheese. That's kind of where you get Monterey yeah. chicken, I guess. And then um, let the that melt. Cheddar. And yeah, it was sharp cheddar and Monterey mm-hmm. Jack. And then at the very end, just garnished it with green onion. You could have, you know, used whatever you like on that. There's all kinds oh, of yeah. things that would make it good. You Man. Can, I thought that the one that Chili's had some type of onions and peppers in the mix somewhere. Some, I've seen I've seen people do pico, like, yeah. you know, a I really good pico or fresh salsa kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you could throw mushrooms in there. Fajita style would be good. Say if you took peppers and onions and mushrooms or whatever mm-hmm. and incorporated that into it. I thought that would be a really good uh, accompaniment to go with it, you know, because you could. It's already on that iron skillet. If you yeah. serve some, served it on top of some fajita vegetables. Um, I've seen it served with rice, uh, mashed potato, a good mashed potatoes. I, mean, I think when I, I don't know when I would get it from Chili's back in the day, I'd always get the mashed potatoes in the corn on top. Mm-hmm. I think and that's what mo- it came the, with. The Monterey chi- it was, was it called Monterey chicken there? I don't. Remember. I don't remember what they called it, but it's been so long. Something it was like the, the only thing on the Chili's menu that I really like. Yeah, you didn't like the baby back ribs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my baby back, baby back, baby back. <laughs> they had those, right? Chili's baby back ribs. Yeah, they did. I wonder what they I went for like. the margaritas and the Monterey chicken. Yeah, or whatever they call it. I don't know. Now you know what they had really good back in the day was chicken strips. They had these big old giant chicken like strips, fried chicken honey strip? mustard. Yeah, they were good. Oh, it was just that. bar food. Yeah, yeah. We just hung out at the bar. Um, when Chili's came to town, that was a big thing. This was back, you know, I was, I don't know, probably 21, 22. It's been 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big thing. You got a Chili's, because up to then, all we had was an Applebee's. So we got some competition in town. <laughs> at another, <laughs> you know. That was before all the Mexican restaurant When did our over. Charlie's come in? <laughs> it was about that same time. Yeah. Well, that whole little complex there in South Haven was all built. Pretty much about the same time. They had they brought like an outback chilies. We had an influx of all these chain restaurants and it's mm-hmm. still like that to this day. Oh yeah. I think it's they're all still in operation. Time. I guess yeah, Chili's and El Charlie's are still open up there. I mean that place is booming. I mean Yeah. You don't want to go in there because of traffic. And the food is not that good. Yeah. <laughs> When's the last time you've had a I, I we haven't been to a restaurant like that in a yeah, while. A long time. I could, if I go to one of those, it's usually like a Buffalo Wild Wings or yeah. something like that. Um, Texas Roadhouse has a decent steak, or used to. It's been a while since we've been there. Man, I used to. Ju- <laughs> that's what I used to put other restaurant steaks up against. You had to at least beat Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> that was the one thing they had going for them: was yeah. a decent steak and rolls with butter. Yep. <laughs> and the big boot of beer. Uh, hey, you'd, you'd be surprised how many steaks I've had at restaurants that can't beat Texas Roadhouse steak. If you can't beat that, you shouldn't even be a steakhouse. Yes, I agree. It's kind of like. The C, you know, it's average. <laughs> yeah. How, if I'm going to pay, I've had some decent. If I'm gonna pay, well, my right my right deal right. is, if I'm gonna pay thirty to forty bucks for a steak at a steakhouse, it better be better than a twenty dollar steak at Texas Roadhouse. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, it's not. You know. What do you think it is? Probably, I don't know, quality of the meat or. So, They're trying I mean, to skip. Yeah, trying to yeah cut costs some kind of way. Um. So you use boneless, skinless, boneless, skinless breasts. Yeah. You you know, and you said this. I bet you that'd be good with thighs. You could do chicken thighs that way. I'd like to try it with thighs. I would do, you know, there'd be like mini versions of them, or you could kind of pile them up and do them that way. I think it would be good. It'd make a really good, like, chicken, barbecue chicken sandwich yeah. done like that with the bacon and the cheese what over it and serve it. Use? I'd do it on like a... a like a, almost like a po' boy roll, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. Not a bun, but it'd be really good. Like you could put two or three thighs on there on a long one and make a Monterey chicken po' boy or something like that. That sounds good. I, I, I bet it'd be real good. <laughs> it was, so what was the total cook time on this? It was a fast cook. Less than an hour total. Yeah. I mean, And there's no real prep. No, just cook the bacon. But you yeah. can cook the bacon. The bacon will cook if you start it when you put the chicken on the grill. Or, you know, when you light your coals, you just kind of go cook your bacon inside, chop up the green onions, and that was it. Yeah. I mean, we shred, we grated. Now, I do suggest grating your own cheese because it seems like when I buy the bag stuff, it doesn't want to melt as good. If you saw the, that cheese over the chicken, it really melted down and kind of combined the jack and the sharp cheddar. Well, they coat that pre-shredded cheese with Like something. a starch, yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't stick together. Right. 
And so it doesn't melt as well. Yeah. You can use the pre-shredded stuff, but I, it, as easy as it is, to, I just got the small blocks of sharp cheddar and jack and run them over a box grater. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, uh, it doesn't take long at all. No. I prefer grate my own cheese. Pimento and cheese is not the same if you don't grate your own. Don't know why. It's just Have you ever, completely not the same. Like You use cheddar when you make pimento cheese most of the time. Uh, you ever use jack? Is that when you do that white pimento cheese? Is it white cheddar? Or yeah, is it jack? it's a sharp white cheddar, Vermont. Yeah, white cheddar. I bet you some jack in there would be good with it. Maybe like a Mexican take on a pimento cheese. That'd be pretty good. Maybe throw some green chilies in there with it. Spice it up. I like mm-hmm. jalapenos in it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that white that, jalapeno. The kind that we buy. Was it palmetto? This is the spicy mm-hmm. jalapeno. That's really good for store bought stuff. Well, the white pimento cheese I do has the jalapenos in it. Yeah. It's a white jalapeno pimento cheese. You know, an, another thing I thought of, like if you had the time and you really wanted to get some more flavor into those boneless, skinless breasts, you could brine them or marinate them for a little while. That'd be really good too. I didn't do it for the video because the premise was more of it's a, a quick, you know, something you could do when you come in from work or something like that. Yeah. But if you wanted to, you know, that morning, you could you could make you up a brine real quick or marinate and get those chicken breasts in it in the refrigerator. And then pull them out, season them, and, and roll with it. That would be really good. You didn't need it. It was so juicy. Yeah, it had. I I'm mean, not a big fan of breast. I mean, I'd rather have a thigh because it's got more flavor, more juice to it. But those were they, really good. I think and what help, what really helps those is a lot of people dry chicken out on, when they put it on a grill or smoker. Because they're thinking, oh, we're going to cook it down at 250 or 275. You really need to bump those temps up. And let it cook faster. It's still going to get some of the smoke flavor from it, but it cooks the outside without drying out the inside. So it all kind of cooks a little bit more even and mm-hmm. faster. And I think, you know, 45 minutes is a great time for boneless, skinless chicken breasts like yeah. that. I mean, you got to think if you cooked them in the oven, I mean, you do this sometimes, you'll just season the chicken breast up, throw them in the oven on what, 350, 375 for 45 minutes? No, yeah, closer. I usually do 400. Oh, do you? So yeah, you 375, 400, yeah. But you still use like a probe and watch them? Yeah, I do. I think it just cooks better chicken. Yeah. My chicken got better once I figured out to cook it at higher temps. I mean, it goes for turkey. It goes for any kind of poultry, really. Yeah, this recipe, you could leave work, go to the grocery store, come home, and have it ready for dinner. Yeah, you know, yeah no problem. no prep, no anything. Make you some vegetables to go with it, mm-hmm. maybe some potatoes or rice, and you got a fine meal. And and man, even kids like it. I mean, the barbecue sauce, and I mean, chicken, the cheese. I mean, it's just it's it's something that everybody likes. Yeah, it was a home run. It was delicious. Yeah, it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it wouldn't be like if it would be keto friendly if you if you substitute some kind of barbecue sauce with sugar free yeah. barbecue sauce or come with something else there. Kinda, and it would be kind of keto. Yeah, kind of keto. <laughs> if you, use I mean, you can the, have cheese and bacon on keto. So yeah, and the seasoning has no sugar in it. Yeah, the only thing that the only thing you're getting is from the barbecue sauce. And if you had, you know, if you got one that's keto approved, go for that. Or I mean, I wouldn't be scared to just do chicken, bacon, cheese and yeah, see how that skip turned the out. Sauce. Yeah, see how that turned out. I don't know that barbecue sauce really it makes it. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, you you did it on the video, or, or I left a little clip in. You want you you got a bite of the chicken and kind of ran it back through all the, <laughs> through the goodness. <laughs> Man, that tasted so good. It's just a dipping, great dipping sauce for it. And you were kind of worried about the um, everything sticking to the pan or having problems sticking to that lodge. And I don't know if it's because we have that pan so well seasoned, but it just slid right off. It was no cleanup whatsoever. Yeah, you just wiped it out pretty mm-hmm. much, didn't you? Yeah. Hit it with some warm water, threw it back in the in the oven for a little bit, and got it warm and yeah. it was ready to go. I was I was thinking, man, we're going because I'd never done that on the grill. I'd done it like in a casserole dish in the mm-hmm. oven, but I mean, I was like, man, it's probably going to probably going to ruin this iron skillet. That's what I told you, but it didn't surprisingly. Um, Sheila on Facebook said it was too much toppings and seasonings. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> little plain ass Sheila. <laughs> that tickled me. Hey, you can leave some toppings <laughs> off and just have. Chicken breast. <laughs> that just tickled me. Too <laughs> much toppings and seasoning. So Sheila disappeared. Plain Sheila don't like the toppings. <laughs> it wasn't over seasoned. I don't understand why people are afraid of flavor. Boring. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the title of our cookbook, just flavor. Flavor. <laughs> oh, we're not afraid of it. I'm not. Hey, salt. Salt rules. Um, so what would you do differently? You know, you could just... 
probably play around with some of the toppings you put on it. I mean, that's pretty standard for me, bacon, cheese, and chicken, and barbecue sauce. But if I really wanted to, you know, make it something special, I'd probably, you know, add some different vegetables to it, like the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And the mushrooms would be great on it, but the peppers and onions would be good. You could spice it up more, add jalapenos. Jalapenos would be good. You could use, you know, like we said, use the thighs instead of the breast if you want it. Really, really flavorful. You could go any direction. You could yeah, really you get could, creative. Yeah, really. Use different cheeses, different sauces. Take it into. You could use jack che- uh, pepper jack cheese to get some spice that way. I mean, it was, it was good. It was good. Monterey yeah. chicken. Um, so try that, that one. I mean, anybody can try that one. Yeah, <laughs> you could do it in the oven. Yeah, you could do. You don't have to do it on the grill. Yeah. In fact. Um, what was it you were looking at? And it was some kind of chicken and casserole you saw. And I said, man, you could turn that Monterey chicken into a casserole real easy by using like the, the little, what do they call those? The breast tenderloins, tenderloins. Yeah. You know, you could season those up, get them in there, cook them over rice or something like a don't pick, use like a yeah. don't pick chicken or something like that. And then put your barbecue sauce over and cheese towards the end. And man, I bet it'd be good. Top it with some like Doritos or something, <laughs> <laughs> like a crunchy topping on top. All of a sudden, you got Monterey chicken casserole. My um, grandmother used to make a, a taco casserole top with Doritos, like crunched up Doritos. Yeah. I don't know. What I remember it thinking it was so good when I was a kid, and then I had it in as an adult, and I was like, "This isn't as good as I remember." Was it like taco in a bag, kind yeah, of like yeah. the kids eat now. Yeah. Like crunch up chips and put the taco meat and stuff in there. It was pretty much just taco yeah. meat and chips, yeah, cheese. Yep. Nothing See, I was that. thinking egg noodles, but you turned your nose up at egg noodles. Yeah, I'm not really. They belong in like chicken noodle soup to me. Rice makes the casserole. That's how I've, my mom always did it. Mm-hmm. I'm a casserole junkie, man. You know me. I asked how many. I don't know how many casserole dishes I asked for for when we got more <laughs> married, but we had a stack of Pyrex. <laughs> we had a tiny little kitchen, no was place like to put it. A dozen casserole dishes. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and she was like, "You really like casseroles, don't you?" <laughs> Love them. Love them. <laughs> Who don't like a good casserole? Especially in this time when it starts getting fall and winter. Man, then you got to take them to people. Whenever you take some food, take them a casserole. That's right. I need to make somebody a casserole. The problem is casseroles are never Weight Watchers approved. <laughs> 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 Find me a Weight Watchers approved casserole. I'm sure there's some out there. I have to ask Ms. Or Emily. keto or, you know, something. Okay, so this They're week, pretty much just carb fillers. Yeah, <laughs> they're just full of carbs and chicken noodle soup or cream of chicken. Cream of chicken, yeah. yeah. Cream of mushroom. Yeah, as well. cream of mushroom. So this week I thought we'd talk about recipes, how to build your own recipe. Okay. Because I feel like you were an expert on how to build a recipe. I don't know about an expert, but I've done several, I think. <laughs> I, and I think that's what it comes down to, do it, you know, build more and more of them. I'm not saying mine are right. By any means, they're not, you know, tested by professionals. <laughs> this is, I'm cooking for the people. <laughs> this is how I cook, and I think that's how my buddies cook, and so that's kind of the way I go about making my recipes. But I can get in the kitchen and cook and taste and season and do this, but when I sit down and try to write a recipe, it, it doesn't, I'm not good at that. You can sit down and write a recipe really easily. You're very good at it. Yeah, I guess. I want to find your secrets. Well, I really don't, I mean, it's really not a secret to it. The way I do it, I just take my ingredients. I always start with ingredients first. Whatever the main ingredient is, is what I list. And then I build down from that what I'm going to do to those ingredients. And, you know, before I ever get to the procedures, uh, you know, if I'm oh, starting, yeah. say, say we'll take that chicken breast uh, recipe. I knew the chicken breast was going to be first. That was the main thing. And then I was going to need the barbecue sauce, the cheese, the bacon. And then we just. And that one was an easier recipe. To and make. that was a real easy because there's not very many components. Yeah. Um, I always list what I'm seasoning it with. And I don't, usually when I'm doing a recipe, I don't get caught up in, oh, you got to have the exact amount of rub that I'm putting on those chicken breasts. Like the Grande Gringo, I just said, hey, you need about a quarter cup of it. Yeah. That's going to be plenty. It's And in, in all my recipes are like that. The, the, the taste, the. The seasoning part of them is kind of subjective, unless you're baking or something like that, where you got to have exact, precise measurements. When when I'm doing just like a regular recipe, the salt, the pepper, these other ingredients, they're they're 
kind of just suggestions and let you adjust them to your taste. I mean, if it's herbs and things like that, I usually kind of stick to it or cayenne pepper or something that's going to blow something out. But still, you could take those and, and go more or less if you like it spicy or whatnot. So, so that's kind of how I start with the ingredient side of it. And then I start thinking about, okay, how am I going to put this together? Like it, my, my map or whatever. And that's what the procedures are. So it usually starts with fire up your grill, you know, season the meat, whatever you got to do to that. Then you got to think about, okay, we're going to put it on. And then what are we going to do to it while it's on? So you kind of and I just, it. and I just, yeah, visualize it in my head and just walk it through the steps. And that's what builds out the whole, the whole recipe. And it's really, there's really nothing to it. When you sit down and think about it in simple terms, you can't get too, too complex or too wordy in the recipe. That doesn't really work. <clears throat> if you think about all the, recipes or cookbooks you've seen most of them are you know they're to the point and that makes it i think to where anybody can cook them and you got to be able to cook this stuff and test it you can't just sit down and write a recipe for something and expect it to work and so that's why we always cook what we're putting out to to see how the how it, you know how it turns out if i need to adjust something and sometimes that's what you know when we when i'm cooking some stuff i'll go back and i may have started with you know oh i needed a half a cup of brown sugar in this recipe to make this glaze. I was like, well, it really needed more sweet, so I'll adjust that. And I'll go back and correct it before I ever get to my finalized version of it. Yeah. And so there is Definitely. there is some test and tune, trial and error on it. It's not all precise. Like, you can't sit down. I don't sit down and say, oh, I know this is going to need a quarter cup of this. I just start with something that's in my head that thinks going to work. And then after I cook it a few times, I kind of adjust it and – that's what gets me to that final recipe. But there's been several times I've seen you say, okay, we need a half cup of this, 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 and you work it out, and it's perfect. Well, I, I guess that comes from just doing it so many times but and kind of you know knowing. in your head? <laughs> Some badass cook. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the answer for that. I mean, how to, I, to me, it just comes natural. Okay. I mean, it really does. It's like. I mean, I just think of how stuff goes together. Mm-hmm. You know, it's mostly mostly it's just like building a rub or a sauce or anything. Yeah. You need this. You need the the sweet component, the savory component, your spicy component. Um, you know, predominantly this is how people taste stuff, and this is how you know I taste stuff, and that's how I want it to come through in these dishes. So um, if I'm going spicy, you know that a little bit goes a long way, so it doesn't take as much. And you've got these ratios kind of that that work with stuff, whether yeah. it's a rub, a sauce, or Whatever, gravy, soup, stew, doesn't matter. They all kind of Do you have some go. type of formula in your head? Like No, you know, no. For every not. one sweet, I need two savory or, you know, any balance uh, and like that? No, no, not really. not really. I mean, I just kind of go with what feels right to start. But when I'm building a recipe, I don't know if it's going to need a teaspoon of salt or a tablespoon of salt. I have to taste, you know, before I get, before yeah. I can. Well, I mean, and that's the personal taste too. That's what it comes down to. You can't say, I mean. Now, there might be something that's but so you, flat. I feel that like I say, you know <laughs> what I would start before with. Before we even go, you already know yeah. whether you need a tablespoon or about where. Well, I, th- I mean, I think it really just comes from cooking so much, reading so many recipes, and yeah. seeing how people put stuff together. I mean, a lot of most of it's been done. Yeah. Most of the stuff that we're doing, and there's not, I mean, it's so hard to come up with something that's brand new that's never been done because, I mean, you know, cooking. Goes, I mean, think of the French, the Italian, all these recipes and, oh, and yeah. stuff that people have been We're building on for years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Years. yeah. <laughs> since, I mean, since books and stuff, yeah. people have been putting recipes in them. And so it's a lot Cook of this. Books are the number one selling books. Yeah. And, and a lot of this stuff. So it's, uh, um, it, and I've been, you know, I remember growing up as a kid, my granny having cookbooks and my mom and oh, yeah. we would look through them. They were always in the kitchen cooking. So they, they you know, I'd always help them. And that's how, kind of how I learned hanging out with my family. Yeah. And uh, that's, I mean, that's kind of the style of cooking I do. It's more family cooking for, you know, for, for, for a home, for the people. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get We ain't this. cooking for chefs. We're cooking for the people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to get you a shirt that says uh, cooking for, for the, the people. people. That's right. For the people. It is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a trained chef. I never claimed to be. I'm not saying my recipes are hundred percent right. They work. They're delicious. They're delicious. That's all that matters. Yeah. That's all that matters yeah. to me. Can you cook? Can you make yeah, delicious food? Yeah, yeah. I don't care how many Michelin stars you have. I don't care, you know, how fancy of a culinary school did you go to. Right. Can well, you, you make delicious food? Can it? T- does it taste good? Yeah. Well, you know, the 
I mean, I guess some, something I would tell tell somebody when they start out and you're th- thinking about wanting to create the recipe for something you're cooking, you just got to start writing it down. You got to get in the habit of everything you do, you yeah, write that down. That is and something get, and, we've learned. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't care if it's something I'm just throwing together. I've got to make notes of it because if I think I got it in my head, it'll be gone in, in the next oh, yeah. you know, in a few hours. And so I usually keep running in my, I don't even, I mean, it's not that I use a pen and paper. I've got a little note section on my phone. I'll just pop it open, put the, t- you know, what I'm cooking up top and then start listing my ingredients. I can always go back and do the steps and simplify the steps. And that's probably what probably takes more time because I'm, I always want to get too wordy with it and put too much stuff in there. And it's so easy to do where I found myself, I feel just right. It's not like you're trying to use incomplete sentences or whatever. I don't say, I mean, this is my style. But I just, you know, to the point. Yeah, try to get to if the If I'm, point. you know, boiling water. I don't want to read a bunch of. Yeah, filler. Yeah. You just want to get to the, do I need to turn the stove on? What does it need to be on? <laughs> what, what's going in it? You know, where's the grill at? Yeah. When are we doing this? When are we wrapping? Or whatever it is, you just need to be to the point. But you want to hit all those steps. You don't want to skip anything because a lot of it, you never know if it's, cr- I mean, it's all crucial mm-hmm. to get to turn out how you want. So. And there's been a few people that will say, um, I need to know where the sugar the sugars in your ingredients list but it's not in the steps you know so there's always sometimes that we miss something oh yeah i'm sure i make errors all the time yeah i try to go back and read them and go back and read them the way mine works i've got to where when i come up with an idea that that we're going to cook i usually try to test it and make sure it's good and i've got the recipe already worked out usually so i usually don't have to create the recipe too much that's that's where i build my cooking you know my shopping list off of and i kind of got the idea the only thing that I really have to sit down and write is kind of the description of what's you know going on. I usually don't write out the steps of the procedures. I do those on Thursday. Is it usually Thursday morning? We usually try to film on Monday or Tuesday, and then you spend time editing, and then we have to get have it ready to go for Thursday. So I'm usually spending Thursday morning taking that ingredients list, getting the procedures, and then writing you a good description the of what code. I did. And the descriptions where I get wordy. If you read any of my descriptions, well, I mean, you have two different things to me. You have a recipe, and then you have a story, or yeah, we kinda, call it a blog post. But yeah, and that's kind of what it is. It's it's more of what I did and why I did it. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's this is not necessarily. I don't put my exact quantities and stuff in there. You can see the recipe below for all that. If yeah. I say use the sauce that we made, the whole sauce recipe will always be towards the end or something. But that's just what that's about. It's, yeah. It's kind of the, the wordy part. <laughs> so I don't have to be wordy in the, in the recipe part. When you said, um, I've learned to write my recipes down, it reminded me of the the first year at Memphis in May, we entered vinegar sauce. You made an awesome vinegar sauce, and it was like number three or four. I mean, yeah. it was up there. And I was like, did you write this recipe down? You said, I got it, I got it, I got yeah. it. And you didn't write it down. It took me years to figure out how to remake it. <laughs> it took us years. <laughs> I got it now, yeah. and I got that first place win with Yeah, it. you did. And I got it wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a vault. <laughs> so always write them down. That's right. That's right. I've made that mistake so many times. And, and it's so easy it to, to jot it down real fast in a note. I know. By I the mean, time you're done cooking and eating, and you forgot it. You forgot it, yeah. or what you did. And especially if you go to tweaking it and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's why I found it easier to do on my phone, because if I'm tweaking these recipes, it's easier to go in there and just – Erase something real fast, put the new measurement or whatever. Because there was a point where I had this notebook going, and it'd be like, okay, we got one tablespoon here, plus a half, plus another quarter. And, and it's all you know, confusing. You don't know what's going by on. By the end, I'm doing math, <laughs> trying to figure out what quantities I've done used. And that just don't, that don't fly. It's easier to change it on that phone. And we'll, when you're cooking, you'll sometimes say, jot this down, you know? Yeah. And I'll, all the time. Yeah. Write it down for you, and you'll do it for me too. I'll say, hey, Write this down. Even if you're in your chair in the living room, I'll holler. And I, and we keep yeah. it going. I mean, I always go title what we're doing because I, I ended up with a bunch of notes that just didn't make any sense. <laughs> it was just quantities and ingredients. I'm like, what the heck is this? And so I, I, I had to start we making did. sure I had the headline right, yeah. at least what it was before. I mean, is this a bit of cheese or is it taco <laughs> soup? I don't know. <laughs> what, what shell had going on this day? <laughs> I know she told me to jot this down. Yeah, that's about how my mind is anyways. A little yeah. cluttered. 
So um, when you're building the recipe, are you thinking about balance? Yeah. Yeah, because you, you want everything to come together. I mean, overall, it's about wanting it to taste good. So you have to keep all the you know the ingredients in balance to do that and, and the stuff you're using. Um, and it really, it, it depends on like how predominantly, say if, you, if you're cooking something that you want, something to shine like say we're doing the the chipotle Mm -hmm. stuff and i want you know i don't use a lot of because a little goes a long way but i want it to be predominant so i've got to figure out how to adjust the right amount of those flavors to get it to come out if i'm calling something that yeah and that's chipotle can ruin a recipe oh yeah yeah it will because it's so strong yeah and and you know if you even look at some of the recipes i've done with it it's minuscule amounts but the flavor's really really prominent in it Mm -hmm. so so you have to think about how those balance out and what you could do. You couldn't just say, oh, I'm going to put a quarter cup of that in there because it's, uh, you know, I'm caught. Because it's going to be Chipotle. Yeah, yeah it sure would. <laughs> 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 um, but so that recipe, you use brown sugar in it. And I was like, you're going to use brown sugar on beef? But I've learned to just ride the wave. You know? Yeah, well, you're talking don't, about the one I got coming up? Uh, no, the flanking ribs. Oh, yeah. You did like a brown sugar Chipotle flanking rib. And, but that was for balance. I, I needed know. the caramel. You How know, did you know that that would work? Because I'd done it before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I just, I, That's I my just question. knew. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was like you needed, I needed the sweetness to go with it. And it's, and it also, that's, that's part of, that style of, of you just have the ribs. experience. Yeah, beef feel, the flanking yeah. ribs. They're like them I in mean, that Korean style. It's got that sweetie. You but know. they weren't Korean. They were just southwesterny. Yeah, but there was still you kind didn't. of a take on that a little bit. When you say, yeah, I mean a little bit because I mean normally I wouldn't even go sweet on beef. I know, but uh, it works with those. They were it, delicious. Yeah, they were all. Awesome. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of the rubs That's, and stuff we use, does, has brown sugar in it anyway, yeah. so it really goes. That's what my um, I'm usually amazed at. Like how do how do you take something that doesn't necessarily go together and, and know work. how much to put, and it turns out amazing. Trial and error. Trial That's and error yeah. experience. I've had yeah. some of them not be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That does not work. <laughs> but that happens rare. It's very As rare. You, the more you cook, the more experience you gain. The less the less, less likely. likely it is to happen when yeah. you first just start throwing stuff. At you know things. Yeah, we've had some. We got in with a game plan. You gotta have a game plan with what you're doing. I mean, it's not it's not like I'm starting from scratch every time. I've got some kind of idea in my head or something that I've done before that I'm gonna see if it'll work with this. You know, it's not it's not going in blind. So it's not like I'm just make making up mad scientist stuff. Yeah, these are all flavors that that work together typically. Yeah. And if you see the stuff I cook with, it's not crazy ingredients. I'm not getting out of the box. I'm just putting combinations of things together that really go well. Yeah. And, and most of it's stuff you already have in your house. So that's, you know, that I mean, just about everybody's got those basic elements in their pantry or whatever, spice cabinet. And one thing you do really well is you say, well, this worked in this recipe, so it's probably going to work in a different way. Like you relate um, mm-hmm. things really well. I think that just comes with part of it. Like more experience you do, the better you get at that. So do you think you lean um, – towards less ingredients now than you used to? Because it seems like your ingredients list have gotten shorter for things like marinades and, you know. Yeah, I, I can see that, but it's just. Sauces and glazes. and trying, It's really trying to keep it more on the simple. And I think of it like kind of, I mean, it kind of goes back to my comp barbecue stuff that you can only taste so many flavors. These judges, when they're judging our food, they can only taste so much. I mean, yeah, a lot of it's over the top. But if you keep it simple to a way it seems like you're going to taste the meat or whatever you're cooking more. You're going to, the flavors are going to come out. They're going to be predominant. You're not trying to just all this clash goes together. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of fluid, uh, if that makes sense. And, yeah, I always and, call it the. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that's what and to me that's what's the best. Yeah. So I don't know if uh, I've just gotten. I don't Wiser. know. My, yeah, maybe maybe more experience the more you do it because I, I know what you're talking about there used to be times where i'd have a list of what i don't know 20 25 <laughs> things in the recipe and they'd be like who's gonna go out and get all this stuff you yeah. know to cook this so i started trying to think like i was cooking it you know just just for the house or something yeah. like that and the food got better and i was like wow you know it don't have to have all that you don't have to be so flamboyant with it or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fine if you like that. If you like to have all these ingredients and special stuff, man, go for it. 
I used to think the more complicated a recipe was, the better the dish was going to be. But I've that's not that true. That's not yeah, true. Heck no, I don't think so. I mean, some of the I mean, think of the good brisket we cook is just salt and pepper. Mm-hmm. I mean, it don't have to be complicated to be good food. You just have to have some good techniques, and, and you know that's know, usually what it comes I mean, down. It really to. does. Yeah. So, how many hours a week do you think you? How many hours a week do you spend thinking about a recipe or recipes in general? Or just food. <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> not, eating, food. <laughs> not eating no. it. Um, like food it. creation? Yes. I would, man, it's it's a lot. It really is yeah. because I've always. You almost trained your mind to think. Yeah, that. and I do. When I see stuff, I'm inspired by it. When I pick up a book or a magazine, I'm inspired by it. So, I mean, it's it's my life. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do is, is try to come up with ideas. And it's so hard. Like, I remember back when we first started, like, we didn't, we didn't always keep a running list of ideas, and I didn't always think like that. It was a lot of times it was like, okay, this week i got to do something. What are we going to do? And we'd sit down and we'd try to brainstorm and come up with something and do it. Sometimes well, it was like pulling teeth. So I got in the habit of always trying to get ideas. and I do it here on the podcast. You know, I'll come up with something, mm-hmm. and, and after this podcast, I'll go say, well, that's a pretty good idea. I made Add it to the list. Up. Yeah. So I've kind of got in the habit of always thinking about what what can I do different or yeah. what can I do that I hadn't done or what can I do that I've seen that, that I think I could do better. Somebody else did or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and so it's a big part of, of my, you know, life, daily life. I mean, yeah. I'm always trying to there, – there, I don't think there's a day goes by where I don't try to come up with something or, or you know, think of a way to improve a recipe. Or, or see or, something and get yeah, inspired. Or, yep, yep. Um, one thing that we we do all the time is everything we get in the mail, like it might be the little Kroger. Coupons. Kro- Kro- Kroger sends out a monthly thing with some recipe ideas in it. We look through that. Heck they yeah. have some decent recipes. In I've there. got some good ones in there. Yeah, And it might not be a recipe you're going to copy, but it might spur an idea for. How to do something know, yeah. better than Kroger did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they try to keep the it honey, simple. Yeah, we look at the Honey Baked Ham catalog. Yeah. The, Oh, I'm going to steal one of theirs, honey baked turkey breast. I've never done that. <laughs> you don't think I'm going to do that? Heck yeah. It's, I know how good the ham was. The, what are we calling it? Not honey baked ham? No, or honey smoked ham. Honey smoked ham. Yeah, we're going to do a honey smoked turkey breast. Yeah. They had them. They've always had them in there. I've just never done one. That's like, well, you know, that's a good recipe right Heck there. Yeah, it is. I want to try it. I mean, I have never done it, so I got to practice that one before, but, but there's it's going to be just like the ham. You just put it on there and cook it and torch it at the end. So. We'll see how that goes. Are all the recipes you're always working on and thinking on, are they all grilling and smoking recipes? No, because I do. I like to cook other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't get in the habit of uh, share. I, I don't. I mean, you know, the stuff I cook inside, like we don't really write those down. I mean, you do some of your stuff, mm-hmm. but what we're trying to work for me when I'm cooking, I'm just those is just for fun and something that you know if it. Did you write your gumbo? Like the gumbo, recipe? I didn't write that down. Yeah, I mean, have. I should have. But I mean, I've got that. I know how to make that. Yeah. It's something uh, chili. It's, I mean, it's not like I'm making the chili that I did outside on the grill. I just throw in some stuff. I made the hot dog sauce the other night. We did chili dogs, and, <laughs> and so yeah, that those kind of stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't get in. The, uh, I'm not in the habit of recording that stuff. I probably should. I mean, yeah. You could use it for something, but a lot of times it's really simple. It's usually. One protein, two veg yeah, is what we've yeah. been trying to do lately. Trying to keep it healthy during the week. Try to at least at least four or five nights, mm-hmm. right? Um, one thing that I you don't do great about is um keeping a kind of a continuous style. Like sometimes you'll put tablespoons and have it all spilled out, and sometimes it'll be <laughs> TBSP or you know. I think that's that's just how I roll. How my <laughs> mind thinks. You know, when important. you're doing it, the style's not important. When you're doing. Now, there's certain ways when you're doing a cookbook, you're mm-hmm. supposed to write this certain way, and they're going to edit it and make sure all your stuff's format. I don't know if, if ours is going to be like that. <laughs> I want it to be, this is how we did it. If you come I mean, to my house and happen to stumble across my notebook of what I had in there, this is what you'd find. You know, I mean, you got to have a format and a style and all that, but I don't get caught up if I said TBS one time and I said tablespoon the next, mm-hmm. as long as it's. You know. I mean, the recipe book, you know, when you get a, a recipe box that's been handed down and you've got these handwritten recipes from your family, they're all kind, they're all over the place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's notes written on the back. You know, <laughs> it's crazy. Smudge marks, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, chocolate's got on them. Man. Yeah. 
You know, I always thought that was cool when you used to have some of those framed mm -hmm. where you made some stuff to hang in the kitchen. It was like recipes from our moms and grandmothers and stuff. And I still have all those. Yeah. Those are really cool. I do. I think so too. Because I mean, those are nobody. Handy. Nobody really hand writes recipes anymore. Mm -hmm. You think who who writes recipes on index cards? I mean, you don't see it. No. Very much anymore. I mean, we share recipes, but it's through everybody gets them online yeah. on their iPads or phones or yeah, whatever. Like, could be people still buy cookbooks, but nobody's handwriting this stuff anymore. My mom sat down. I told her I wanted to get her recipes, and so she's been recording everything she. Could. I, I gave her a list of like. All the stuff I could remember she cooked. Mm -hmm. And I actually think about putting this together in a book. I'd love, I'd love to do it sooner than later, but it's just it's a big undertaking. Yeah. Th th that's my goal or to could, make yeah. my mom's cookbook for her because it was all my favorite stuff she did. Yeah. And she's got like a full, you know, three-subject notebook that she sat down and hand-wrote all this stuff. I hope I could read it. <laughs> How would we take that and turn it? I don't know. I mean, you got the recipes. You'd have to figure out a way to turn Transcribe it. Transcribe it there's, yeah, there's, and print it. There's ways it could be done. You got me thinking. I was just thinking that'd make a great Christmas present for her. Yeah. Heck, I want it. That's why I well, had her I do know. it. Get a couple <laughs> of them made, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not like for sale. I think everybody would want my mom's recipes. They're good. <laughs> I mean, I may be biased. The recipes that made Malcolm Reed. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite mama's recipes. <laughs> My mama's yeah, recipes. She can cook. She can You're flat cook. cook. Yeah. yeah. I'd put her, hey, if, if I need to do R&D on something to figure it out, that's mm -hmm. who I call. Because I put her to work on something, and she will cook it until she can make it better. Yeah. That's her thing. It's You're not only on that it. she's going to make it that way, she's going to make it better than they made it. <laughs> she's done it several times for, um, for stuff, you know. She just, I don't know, she's got that, what you, is that obsessive compulsive? Or what is it when you're um, focused in on something like no, that? No, but she does, I wouldn't call it obsessive compulsive, but she does get focused in on it. And yeah, and until she, she conquers it, it yeah. 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 And then it's on to the next thing, whatever. Because yeah. we've been Right now I got her on sausage. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's perfected my sausage recipes. And she's, I don't know how many pounds of sausage she's made. <laughs> We're going to start giving that away. You can get a Post Malone shirt and a <laughs> pack of sausage. sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've taken her, I don't know, eight butts. She's ground up and made it. And she's got them all numbered. And then I'll go get, I'll pick some up and we'll try them. And about there with a spicy in a, in a country style. Mm -hmm. To make your own sausage. Yeah. Oh, man, it tastes as good as any country sausage I've, mm -hmm. I remember it's good. from a kid. I mean, it's. Better than anything you get at the store. Yeah. And you know, it's if you, you can either, you know, grind your own pork or you can just buy ground pork. Yeah, they and sell mix just, it. Yeah. 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 That's, that was, and that's in fact, now my mom's got it tweaked. That's when I got to go back and get it and start cooking and getting the ratio right. Cause she's, she's already, I mean, she's, she's d d done a lot of it, but mm -hmm. got to fine tune it just a little bit and it'll be ready to roll. We're going to have to put her on the payroll. payroll. <laughs> I gotta um, find something that well, you know, I've got her cornbread and biscuit recipes. Yeah. That uh, that I want us to get to working on too. That's on deck. So do you have flavors that you like to pair? Uh, I mean, I got a ton of flavors <laughs> I like to, play, <laughs> to pair. But yeah, I mean it's it's all it's I mean, you 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 have to have balance. You know what I mean? You gotta have sweet, savory, a uh, little bit of spice. I mean, got to have the saltiness to balance it all out. But I think, I think that's what really works for my style, you know. Do you have anything you gravitate towards, like maybe an Asian flavors or Mexican flavors? My favorite, kind of? Yeah. I mean, I would say it's more Southern. That's what style I do. I mean, we, of course, we do the barbecue thing. But, um, I mean, I I love all kinds of cuisine. That's why, yeah. I mean, I mean you know, Asian foods, I like. Mexican food's probably my favorite. I mean, I, I really do. That's, you got some good tacos. We've, we've, this yeah, we've got and we've got five Mexican restaurants in our town, <laughs> in a small little town, and so it's a big part of what we when we go out. That's where we go to Mexican. Maybe it's the tequila I like. I don't know, but then you know I love Italian food, love mm -hmm. Jamaican Caribbean food. I mean, you can tell I hate food. <laughs> but I mean, I don't really have one that I gravitate to. No. Yeah. I mix it like up. I mix it up. Yeah. I, 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 I'm all over the board when it comes to that. I try to, and, I, and it just, it's curious. It, I guess my curiosity like has me want, yeah, wanting to, wanting to try all different kinds of stuff and not be boring. 
Mm-hmm. But I hate that. That's one thing I don't like is being stuck in that same rut. And we did that with some of those, like we, you said, we've been trying to eat healthier. So we got on some of those box. We've tried some of those different box things like, what was it? Hello Fresh. So, and, yeah. Meal subscription. Yeah. And I forget which other one, but all of them taste about the same. They're all, you know, that one kind of way. I mean, they give you the ingredients and the recipes on how to do it. But I always found myself, man, we could take this and tweak it and make it better. And so we just But it did keep it interesting. Them. Yeah, but it's all like the same note. Everything what, what is. What was the last one we did that was the sun box? Yeah. It was supposed to be the healthiest of all of them. It was. It was. Yeah, it was. You, you might as well just be eating grass. <laughs> I think tough. they just ship you that sometime. We're going to go out there and pick these dandelions and send you this. And <laughs> we're going to give you four ounces of grass fed, you know, something animal that doesn't have any flavor at all. I was like, man, we got to, we got to go back to some making our own stuff. And it's harder. I mean, it is hard, even for us when we stay so busy. Um, it's just, I mean, you got to plan. Yeah. So what we try to do is like, shell takes a night. I take a night. Shell takes a night. And we just rotate mm-hmm. and we, and we stay on track to try to, to try to eat it kind of on the healthier side. Like if I do something, I try to pair it with some vegetables that aren't bad. Yeah. Try to stay away from starch and breads. Yeah. Especially through the week. Yeah. Try to keep it, um, you know, broccoli. Yeah. Sweet potatoes. But you use flavors and stuff that make it taste good. And that's what, you know. Pork. Chicken. Fish. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> just list just ingredients. Off stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and my stuff's usually... Out of the box and yeah, very good. And shells is just straightforward. Same thing. <laughs> um, but, does that make you mad? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> you're creative in other ways. <laughs> no, you're you're you can flat cook. I ain't gonna take that from you. Yeah, I do. It's hard. It is hard. Well, when I try new stuff, sometimes it doesn't turn out. That happens to all of us. What did I do the other night that? It was the spaghetti squash. Yeah, that was pretty good, though. It was okay. What did we serve that with? It was like a carbonata. Carbon, yeah. Carbonara. Yeah, but it was made with spaghetti squash. It was okay. Yeah. It was real earthy. That was pretty good. Um. So do you go through phases? Like, you went through a phase with brisket where it was real competition-y. And now you're going through a phase with brisket where you like that Texas style. And I don't realize I do, but I probably do, you know. And the I've just been on that quest to make that perfect offset cooker brisket Texas style that's my personal favorite. And so that's how I kind of got on it. I mean, contest brisket, I didn't, I didn't really cook a bunch of those to eat. We just cooked them because we were cooking them for contests. Yeah, yeah. you were trying to win. Yeah. yeah. Trying to conquer the, that. The, the and you did. Texas style or offset brisket with the heavy you know, salt and pepper bark. Do you feel like you've made phenomenal. that? I'm still... Have I made it as good as, as what I've had in Texas? No. I've gotten close. That last one you did was pretty yeah, close. But I still haven't got it completely down. And I and and I don't think it's the it's not the way that I'm cooking it or taking attempts I'm taking it to or the brisket itself. It has to do with the way they're able to hold it for the way they hold it in those alto shams. That's what that's the conclusion me and some of the other people I know that are working on has come to that. It has to something has to happen for him to get that that contest, you know, or, or that perfect the, the perfect Texas brisket they're serving at those restaurants where folks are lining up. Yeah, you know. I, I mean, checked on the prices of Alto Shams; they are not cheap. Oh, you can get one for you know, a couple grand, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like a little I mean, one? No, yeah, I mean I think like twenty five hundred bucks or something like okay. that. They're not too bad. Do you plug them in? Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't know if they wire into like two twenty or. What kind yeah. of power it might they might not have? I have no idea. But are they as tall as you? It's refrigerator size. Some okay. I mean, they got different ones. They got some half ones. They got some you know regular refrigerator size height ones. I guess you would say those are nearly six foot or five something. Is there an alto sham in my future? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get that perfect brisket. You gotta at least rule it out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to think those with those things, you can hold them and control the humidity in it. And I think that's what's really making that brisket better. So in a cooler, I can hold it in a Cambro or hold it in a dry cooler, but it's still not the same as being able to control that temp the way you can in those. So when you're controlling the humidity, do you want a lot of humidity or no I humidity? I don't know. I got, I, nobody's told me that. Yeah. That's something I got to play with and see. 
imagine it's just some. I don't so imagine there, it's dry. You so know? there is an outdoor shoe about future. <laughs> I've, I hadn't ordered one. <laughs> I hadn't ordered one. I've got a lot of other stuff I've got to order before I just get me an outdoor shoe to practice brisket, man. <laughs> where, like, what else am I going to use it for? Yeah, where I mean, you I need, first, it? I need a commercial kitchen set up. So that's next on my list. So what's your advice to someone looking to build their own recipes? Just to get started and to, to first to start, get, get used to writing your ingredients down, the amounts and quantities that you're using and working through the procedures and keeping them simple, but to the, you know, to precisely to the points you're trying to do, there's no um, right or wrong way to, to, to do it. I mean, you just want to start. You can always fine tune it and figure out, you know, how it goes as far as the orders and, of ingredients and, and you know you just want to list them list heck list them from the greatest to smallest as you're going the main ingredients to the top and i mean we're not you know nobody's grading you on this this is for your personal yeah thing but when you start creating recipes you just want to get in the habit of keeping track of them what you're doing you know that way you got a reference to go back to even if you're using someone else's recipe yeah even if you're going yeah get in the habit of it and i mean you what, make tweaks to it i do that a lot yeah so and a lot of people do that yeah They'll, you know, they'll take, all right, take my stuff, any of my recipes and tweak it to your own, but make sure you write it down. Cause I don't know how many times comp guys will go, well, man, I made this, this mm-hmm. time. I don't remember what I did. Mm-hmm. I won with it. And I wish I would have knew what I put in that glaze or sauce or injection or whatever. I mean, get in the habit of recording that stuff and it'll help. It'll make you a better cook. Yeah. I agree. And doing it, getting out there and doing it. <laughs> and the more you do it, the more you build recipes, the easier they yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Then it comes second nature. Everything you're thinking of is like that in some kind of order. And then you're thinking about food all the time. You're thinking about food all the time. <laughs> you're overweight, fat and happy though. <laughs> and then you're talking about needing to go on a diet, eat healthy. <laughs> it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. That's right. It's a lifestyle. So we have um, five dozen oysters about to hit. Yeah, we got to do some. Okay, door. so. We, that's that's what we got on tap this weekend. I've got World Foods competition coming up next week. Mm-hmm. I'm in the seafood category. So we've got the challenge is you've got to do two entries in the first round. One of them is a structured build, and one of them is kind of chef's choice, your own personal creation. This is the very first round, and I think you have an hour and 50 minutes or something like that. It's not quite two hours to do them. And they tell you like the oyster, the oyster, um, it has to be char grilled southwestern style oysters. That's your structured build and of you, some sort. You've got to you've create, got create your own freedom recipe. to create southwestern style char grilled oysters. Yeah. And they're due first. And then you have about 40, 50 minutes after that to turn in your second structured uh, chef's choice. And we're going to do something. I'm not going to tell everybody what I'm doing because I don't want anybody to copy it yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we're working through it. We're, we're working through it. Yeah. We've got those recipes. We've sat down. I had to I had to submit the recipes. They make you submit them before because that's kind of how you're judged at this world Execution food thing. Execution is yeah. one of the – And it's executing according to the recipe you submitted. So you can't totally do something different or not have an ingredient in there. Everything has to be prevalent that you say is going to be there. And that's what makes the world food – uh, competition yeah, challenge. so everybody else has already submitted their recipes as well. Yeah, so, so it don't matter, does yeah. it? I guess they have. They had to. I yeah. guess they can. But so we're going to work on that. We're going to do our, work on our southwestern char grilled oysters. It means I'm going to be shucking oysters this afternoon. I'm looking forward to some oysters. Heck yeah, they ought to be good. Yeah. And then we're going to then we're going to do our chef's choice recipe, and then we have to work on if we make it to the top ten, you have to cook uh, another round, and that can be. Anything you want, seafood in my category, but it has to incorporate um, caviar. Caviar. Yeah. yeah. And so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm just going to top something. Is it good caviar or bad caviar? I don't know. Because, you know, I'm not a caviar. I'm not going to taste it. I'm, I don't do I caviar. Like caviar. You're going to be the official taster of that one. But I've had some bad stuff, too. You know? Yeah, I've fishy. Had I don't I hate yeah, that. I've had some stuff that's ooh, good. Really? I, yeah. I have had some that's good, but you got to have plenty of cream cheese and. <laughs> A nice little thing to eat it on where you just don't know you're eating it. Or even on sushi. Yeah. I can do some caviar on sushi. I got the sauce. and We had an amuse-bouche at Emeralds in New Orleans one one time. Was caviar part of it? Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. It was beluga. I I think that's what we have. I think that's what we're using. Oh, really? Yeah. I think that's what it is. Does that come from beluga whales? (laughs) I don't know. They kill them? I don't know. 
I don't know. I hope not. Seems like too know. friendly. Is Beluga a thing? Did I just make that up? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who I didn't look. It tells on there on World Foods what kind of who the sponsors are. Who's, yeah. That's why they're doing it. They've got people sponsored up. Like yeah. the oysters is a specific oyster that comes from. Oh, it's a. Specific? I think it's coming from Texas, like some Texas Gulf oysters or something. Okay. Um, I think I don't know for sure. But I think that's what it was. I, I should have read all that up. We could probably pull it up, but we're getting Gulf oysters from Louisiana. Yeah, I imagine they'll be close. We're just I'm just needing to get the technique and the flavors down. Yeah. With the recipe, so that's what we're working on. And then we've got um, Chef Jason from uh, Matt's buddy from me at Meat Church. He, he's from he lives over there, and he's going to come help us out in the kitchen. And, uh, so and check, what, be what's cool. his the that that, that giant, giant chef, chef on yeah. Instagram? Y'all check him out. It's going to be me, Jason, and you. Yep, just three of us. We mm-hmm. might pull Emily if we need to for some plating or something. Yeah. Because you have to tag in and tag out at World Foods. You can only but have. You can have three people. You have in the three people, at all time. and then one person kind of waiting on deck. You know, somebody wants to tag out. Like, so I don't know if we'll need her. We might get her to come help us plate or do something. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. But um, that's what's coming up. We'll do a podcast next week before we head out to World Foods. Um, and we also have a recipe. <laughs> we actually shot it this week. So yeah, it'll come out next week. What was it, Jack Sirloin in Jack honor Daniels? of the Jack Daniels? Sirloin. Jack Daniels coming up. Trying to do um, a special guest, but it's going to be like our first try to attempt at a call in. <laughs> Are we still going to try that? Uh, we need to. I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't gotten an official word on that, but okay. we're working on it. And hopefully they'll be from Jack Daniels. So, <laughs> but we're going to try. And that's, <laughs> hey, everybody going to the Jack coming up. Everybody going yeah, to World luck. Foods will, you know, come by and say hi. I wish everybody luck. And, same thing for the Jack Daniels the following week. Is that what it is? The following week? It's the weekend before Halloween. Yeah. Be the, the last weekend. Week. I think that's the last weekend in October, isn't it? It is. Oh, we have an anniversary coming up. We do? I forgot about that. All right. What are we doing for that? Because you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Takes years off your life. We'll uh, figure it out. All right. Well, where can everybody find us, Shell? If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's at how to bbq right on facebook instagram twitter and of course youtube if you like if you'd like to connect with me it's miss southern shell on instagram and twitter and we appreciate y'all hanging out with us this week and we'll be back next week do it again